Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Filmmaking Sucks podcast. Where we tell you about all the mistakes you can make when making a film and how to avoid them. Do we? Really? Not really. We haven't been really recently. No. We've been giving a lot of information. I guess so, yes. Yeah. We haven't really been talking about... Mistakes? Mistakes. Hmm. I guess that's a mistake? That's a mistake on our part. Mistakes you can make while making a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Podcasting sucks. Yeah. Or do mistake. we suck at podcasting? I'm not sure. I don't know. Number one, ignoring your mission statement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I hope these panels have been informational and uh, yeah, there's been a lot of panels, lots of panels. We get, a, we, we get we get into a lot of panels, I guess. But you know, you you have to get information from lots of different sources when making a movie. Mm-hmm. It's helpful, I think. Yeah. I learned a lot. I listened to the cinematography one. Yeah, that's and I, true. You weren't actually there for any I was of those not. Panels. So it was that, really interesting. And the Latino panel. Yeah, the Latino panel was a great conversation. So, so tell me, what do you think about the two of them then? About the two panels then? Since oh, I thought they were good. I mean, cinematography, I understood maybe like fifty nine percent of it. Fifty nine percent. No, <laughs> that specific. No. It just sounded like a really good number. Oh, so not even that much. No, I understood oh. a fair amount of it. And then you guys kind of geeked out, and then I was like, what? Mm. What? Um, but no, I thought they were really good. I think it's interesting. You know, I didn't even think about that, that the first time you heard them was when we, when I I listened to them, when I uploaded them, that's it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Edwin had some great stories and I think Mm -hmm. that was a really, really great perspective to get out there. Really nice meeting him. Yeah. Uh, That was really nice meeting him. He's a really cool guy. I'm glad he's finally getting back into, uh, filmmaking. Yeah. You know, he's getting back on the saddle. So that's cool. Yeah. I think people who have that kind of history and. You know, I think it's important. I think, you know, we don't want them to get passed by by this next generation. Oh, well. I mean, are we the previous generation? Because we're not the next generation. No. Okay. No, the next generation has been starting making movies at like 15 now. Yeah, I know. Mm. That's what they do now. They start real young. So. I mean, we technically did too. Just none of us have our movies from childhood. Yeah, I, I, well, I didn't, but okay. I don't know. My mom is still looking for that grease tape. I have the documentary that I was making of my old band. <laughs> on a, a, that's the closest we had. We had one camera. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna document ourselves recording the album that we never recorded. Yeah. <laughs> and we ended up just not. Yeah, just talking at the camera a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my mom still threatens to pull out. You know, we re- remade Grease with myself as Danny Zuko. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> So my mom keeps starting to find that. So the tape. remake trend is your fault. It's my fault. I started it way back when I was seven. It was my seventh birthday. They were like, what do you want to do for your birthday? I was like, I want to remake Grease. So they were actually like, we got the T-Bird jackets and the pink ladies. And then literally my, my friends had like one of those power wheels. I didn't have one. My friend did. Uh-huh. So I did that. And then my other friend brought hers. So we had two power wheels and we raced them. Wow. And we did the whole Grease Lightning song on top of a power wheel. Wow. <laughs> now you really wish you could fetch, you could I've find never, this tape. I've never heard this story before. You've heard the you've heard of the threat. I've heard, I know, it. no, no. You told me you had a Greece birthday party. You didn't <laughs> tell me you 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 made the damn movie. Yes, we did. We made the movie. Wow. And they still have the tapes. Somewhere. She keeps claiming that she does. Wow. Yeah. Me as Danny. I did the whole You would Grease be. Lightning. Mm-hmm. My friend crashed the power wheel. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> Can Nikki? Oh God. <laughs> so, um, so this week was a lot of up and down. <laughs> it was a lot of ups and downs on this week. Not not exciting as much, but ups and downs. Yeah, ups and downs. We got to we got to meet Michael Madsen. Not yes, Michael Madsen. No, Tom, Tom Sizemore. Sizemore. Oh, God. That's, Fired. I, no, no, no. It was a conversation I had with with Hank, where he where he. Uh, and I told him, oh, I got to meet Tom Sizemore. He says it should have been Michael Madsen. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> um, Hank is never satisfied. Mm-mm. Nope, never satisfied. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. So we got to meet Tom Sizemore. Yeah. And, and, then, uh, and then he disappeared. The guy from Penny Dreadfill? Yeah. I Johnny don't know what, Bocamp? I, I don't know his name. I'm going to go with that. And I could be completely wrong, but that's what I'm going with. All right, fine. All right. He's in season two of Penny Dreadful. Yes. He plays Angelique, which is very confusing. So now I really want to watch the show. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. So you got to do that? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you played you. You played in London. I played in London. You're officially an international filmmaker. I'm an filmmaker. international filmmaker. 
about time. Congratulations. Uh, Mr. Matthew Davies represented the film. We mm-hmm. had a temporary London office. That was yeah. exciting. Um, yeah. That just was... got the notice. Unfortunately, you didn't win. I did not win. You did not win best short. No. But uh, so there's another down. Yeah. No, the big down for the weekend. What was your big down for the week? You had a big down this weekend. It hit you hard. I did not get into the festival I wanted to. That stinks. Yeah, I really wanted it. Yeah, I know. I've, it's the same festival. I wanted that festival last year and didn't get into that one. Either. No, and then this year we submitted two more and didn't get in again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's a stepping stone film festival. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we were really hoping that we could take that next kind of step up into our larger venue with a little bit more. I hate to say the word prestige, but exposure, exposure. Well, it's it's a it's it is some prestige because it's an old festival. It's mm-hmm. been a, what tw- this is this is twenty years. Twenty years. This is this twentieth anniversary. Everybody's so. like, what festival is this? Oh yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> all two of our fans. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. She doesn't listen. No. <laughs> Um, it's, yeah, they've been around for 20 years, yeah. so it's, it is, it is, it yeah. does have some prestige to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and yes, a lot of, a lot of international films and big films yeah. play there. Oh, we attended it yeah. last year we went, and yeah. we were really impressed, you know, not only with the programming, but, you know, with At the... least three of the movies that we saw there last year are either on, are on, I think, Shudder yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Or Shutter or Amazon Prime or Netflix. Yeah, and I mean, one of them so was instantly it, snatched up and has not been seen yet. It's pending release. What? Most Beautiful Island. Yeah, that's coming out soon. That's mm-hmm. coming out very soon. It's pending yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah, but that's exactly three, three, that three. No, wait, wait. Let me think. The Void mm-hmm. is on Netflix. Yep. Hounds of Love is on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Sixty Eight Kills. Uh, just Sixty Eight came out. Kill is out or coming out. Yeah. I think that's going to shudder. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 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 what was the other one I was thinking? Oh, yeah, you said Mills Beautiful Island. Yeah. That's coming out, you know. Uh, um, there was another one I forget the name of. What did I see? Hounds of Love I saw the first night. That Whatever. I wasn't there for you. No, you weren't there for Hounds of Love. You still haven't seen that. No. Um, it's on my list. But yeah, like so I say, like there is some prestige to this festival because these are films that are now Yeah. You know, now making waves around in the, the yeah, horror. They're what everybody's talking about. They're the, the thing. Yeah. There was another one, there was one that we missed. Uh I forget the name of it, doesn't matter, but that's out there, that's out there now too as well. So yeah. that's what it is. There there is some prestige to this festival because they are film there it's a festival where um these, I actually I think it was the last the net the last or the next to last stop on the Voids tour. Yeah, it was like the next to last stop. You know, so it's it's a festival that um that uh, um I can't think of I can't think of the word for them the um the producers reps mm-hmm. and sales agents send their films to yeah. To have screened. Yeah, there. they do like a theatrical, or limited yeah. theatrical run. It's yeah. one of the the, the festivals mm-hmm. that they consider part they of. They curate. They do get films um, from South by Southwest. Yes, and they get films from. Um, they've had Sundance films. Mm-hmm. They've had Fantasia films. They yep. films have come from them onto those festivals as well. Yeah. So it's a festival that other big fests look at. Yes. So that's why, yeah, there is prestige. There's, to it. there's definitely a heritage to it. Yeah, and you know, for me, it's, it's. There's a lot of st- stronger women filmmakers that have come out of the festival. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are just features we're talking about. There are sh- these are just shorts. There, are, there are, these are features we're talking about yeah. right now. But there are shorts that yeah, played the, there last the, year yeah. and played there in years before that are also on Shutter and Amazon yeah, Prime uh, and uh, Netflix um, as well. Jill Six is the. Uh, the stylist. The stylist is a Shutter exclusive. They, yeah, they they played there and they played there too. Yeah. Exactly. She's and actually yes, premiering Net- this year. Yeah. yeah, and yes, Netflix does. Now have everybody short has figured films. out what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there is there is a it is. So a you know, it was stuff. a reach. It, I'll be honest, it was a reach. It's my first film. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, and I, I it would have been really cool to. It would have been amazing. Yeah. It would have been, been oh amazing god, mind blowing. Um, it would have made my life year. I don't know everything. <laughs> but then you didn't get in. I didn't get in. So it... It was hard. It was sad. Well, because the hard thing was uh, they rejected the first one. Mm-hmm. And then 
We got because you get an email for each separate film. Yeah, we sent mastectomy as well, yeah. which which was a long shot. I knew that was wasn't because it's been on. It's been a it's been around for. We've had it for a while. It's not a very. It's not a new movie. Yeah. So I understand that that was already a strike against it. Yeah. You know. Uh, it is already available. It's on our website already to watch. So yeah. that's another strike against it that it's available. It already had its exposure when it it's, was part yeah. of the ABCs of Death yeah. competition. Yeah. And Not it part of the ABCs of Death, part of the yeah. competition. Yeah. <laughs> and it hasn't had a screening no. in like a year and a half. Yeah. So again, more strikes against it. They want newer films. So I understand yeah. that. I get that, you know. Um, so yeah, we got that email and then we waited 10 minutes. No, it was like two hours. Yeah, no, I'm saying we waited 10, 10 minutes, minutes no. then 20 minutes, yeah. then a half hour. And then my heart started beating a little faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and my cell phone died, which sucked. Um, but then two hours later, the email finally came in, which was heartbreaking. Yep. Um, I was really sad. I was really down. I was questioning a lot. I was questioning everything. Beating myself up. Beating now, up why were you film. questioning? I don't know. What made you question? Because I mean, you've had a bunch of screenings. So. I've had a bunch of screenings. You know, I think it's it's very unique to be a first time filmmaker in a company that's been around for God. How long have we technically been around? Oh, I don't know. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not a company, okay? okay? We're a team. We're a team. That's it. We're not okay, a company. Okay, so we're a team. And we've been making We don't produce films. other people's films. No, we don't. We're, we're, we're not a company. But we're a team. Yeah. It's been around for a really long time. Um, and I, and it's, I, I apply a lot of those years to myself and to this. So it's kind of like I feel like I'm still just beating my head against this wall. But then I have to like remember that this is my first. Mm-hmm. Um, you're kind of starting over. I'm starting after all over the years again. of things yeah. we've been doing. You're technically a newbie starting over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're back in the new, yeah, the new filmmaker seat. But I have to say, it was really nice, and it's going to feel really weird saying this on the podcast. But I don't know. I'm just feeling very open and brutally honest since we're talking about this. Um, we went to a premiere this weekend of our friends, mm-hmm. and it was absolutely awesome to have people talk to me. That was a really big highlight of yeah. that night for me. People ask you about they your asked film. me. It wasn't like you and then looking directly at you and kind of putting yeah. that hand to the side to also yeah. acknowledge me. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool to mm-hmm. feel like the respect um, and everybody was super supportive for, of yeah, me. Because you're, you're a director. Yeah. Officially a director. I'm officially now. a director now. Officially. I mean, you've directed before, but it's officially. Yeah. It's yeah. officially all mine. It's yeah. all mine. There's no confusion. There's no, mm-hmm. okay, who really helped her out? Who really, you know, I wrote yeah. this. I directed it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we produced it. Um, but everybody has a producing partner. But yeah, no, it was really, that was a highlight for me mm-hmm. um, to get congratulations from our, and respect from our group of friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was kind of like I was coming off the high of that. Yeah. To be the next rejected. morning. The next morning. Wake up to rejection. And <laughs> still like screening in London that day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was a very strange day because it and was then, like. And then after the London screening, you got an acceptance to another festival. I did. I will. So yeah. So I got rejected on Sunday. And then Monday we woke up and we had an, uh, had an acceptance from another one. So Saturday night you got accepted by people. Yes. For finally. Yeah. Then Sunday you were rejected. rejected. Then you played in London. That you couldn't in front of obviously we weren't we there. Went there. But we had an went. amazing friend who went there and supported mm-hmm. for us and repped for us. Um which is really crazy because there were three representatives from Arrow Video, which is That's pretty cool. The UK hard distributor mm-hmm. um in the audience. Yeah. So that was another high. That was another perk. The Arrow Video watched Arrow your, watched Video. Your film. Three people from Arrow Video saw my film. Yeah. And they laughed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they reacted to the film. And, and that's, I mean, what more could you really ask for is people reacting to the film. Yeah. So it's been a very strange roller coaster over the last couple of uh, days. 48 hours. 48 hours. It was <laughs> emotionally exhausting and draining. Um, but when I, the rejection came in, and I think this is you know kind of what we want to talk to you guys about, um, it's hard. It's really hard. When there's, it's not just a rejection. Rejection that you really wanted. Yes, it's a rejection that you had on a pedestal. Yeah. 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 When they rejected 
they rejected me. They rejected Theta last year. That was a big one because when we were shooting Theta, mm -hmm. I wanted that festival. Yeah. Like I was shooting it, and I said, "This is the one I want to get into." Yeah, and then this is the first real, real big one. I mean, I knew. I mean, like obviously, I wanted Macabre Fair. Yeah, I wanted Macabre Fair to be the local. The, to, no, not even the local. I wanted that to be the premiere. Yeah, you know, um, but. That, uh, but the other fest wasn't for two months, two or three months afterwards. So I said, okay, well, we obviously can't get our premiere there. And I said, I said, no, we're, I don't, I didn't think we were going to get a premiere there. Hmm. I didn't, we're not big enough for it. We don't have, an, we, uh, we're just, we just don't. We don't have the reach. Yeah, yeah. We don't have the reach for that, you know, but to be just one of the other films playing, I thought we could have been. Yeah. And I thought that while we were shooting, I said, all right, so basically we'll be, we, we we're going to shoot to get a premiere at Macabre Fair and then hopefully the next screening would be this festival. Yeah. You know? And then I think I had the added pressure where, you know, when we got rejected last year and then we went to all those film festivals mm -hmm. at the end of the year or throughout the year um, and then we were like, we're going to make a you know, festival baby next year we're going to, next year we're going to and I think I had that like extra pressure on mm -hmm. my shoulders that I put there, not that you put there, but I did it. Um, of being the, the, the next movie of the next year where mm -hmm. we said next year we'll be here. Yeah. Um, and we weren't and I felt like I let us down. Uh, no, you didn't let us down. No, I didn't. No. But it, that's more of that voice that, that kind of clicks on when you're really hoping for something and you don't get it. Mm. It's part of that icky. Oh, it's icky. Self-downing. Yeah, it sucks. Self-deprecating. Sad. Everything is your fault. Why? Are yeah. you, why are you still doing? Why are you this? still doing this? You're thirty. You're going on thirty-five years old. You know. Yeah. You, you still live in your mother-in-law's upper top mm -hmm. apartment. <laughs> you know. When are you gonna get your shit together? Yeah. Um. You really question a lot. You know. When you're like, you know, what am I not doing? Wasn't this enough? Like I tried, and it's 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 funny, and it has somewhat of a political nature to it. It has a message behind it. Uh, you know, people react to it. People laugh at it. People, you know, have really enjoyed it. I mean, Axe Wound, they laughed the entire movie. Yeah. Um, people are having a really great response to it. <laughs> what more can I do? Um, it, to me, what it does, whenever I get that, whenever I get a rejection. Yeah. And especially because after last year, we got a lot, we, got, we did get a lot of rejections for Theta. Mm -hmm. And then we did attend a lot of those festivals anyway. Like we tell, like we say all the time, yep. go to the festivals, just yep. go, just go. go, whether you're playing or not, go. Yeah. Um, practice what we preach. Yes. So we went to a lot of those festivals. And we bought our tickets for this festival. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. We're going to this too. We got rejected. <laughs> Two of our films got rejected and we're still going to go. Still going to go. You know? It took me about 24 but, hours to agree to it. Yeah. But. <laughs> but it just says to me, we just need to work harder. It's that adage of you have to be be so good that they can't ignore you. Yeah. Be so good that they can't go on without you. That's like, no, we need that period. That's yeah. it. We want this film. It's going to play here. Period. There's no, that's it. Yeah. That's how good this is. It needs to play here. Yeah. We need to, we need to show this. You know what it also does too? It's like, you know, we're still waiting and, on a fair number of festivals for Beneath. Yeah. Um, we're, all, we're only about, I'm going to say maybe a third of the way through. I know. It's so you only gotta, a third. Gotta, yeah. We have. And I got I, some big ones that I'm waiting on still. I looked at it today and I think we have, I think you have um, three notifications per month. Yeah. For the next four or five months. Yeah. So it's going to be a couple of, couple of weekends of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of days feeling like this. Yeah. Um. You know, and there's there's one I know that's coming. I think notification mm -hmm. sometime in June. And that one's gonna kick your it's ass. It's gonna if you don't, destroy if, me. If, yeah, that's if another 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 pedestal yeah. festival for you. It's a bigger pedestal, I think. Is it? I think. Okay. For in my mind, it is. Huh? So just you know, guys, when I'm here eating ice cream <laughs> on microphone, <laughs> which I can't eat because I'm lactose intolerant, you know it's gonna be bad. <laughs> um. It, it it's like it also reminds me how much farther we have to go. Yeah. That's the other thing. Where it's not just make a movie mm. and people will love it. You know, that this is not make it and they will come. No. Absolutely not. There is a big problem that a lot of the indie filmmakers have with Hollywood. Yeah. And bigger budget films 
And I don't think they actually have a problem with the films. It's there. It's, it's kind of like that thorn in your side of something you can't do and you don't know how to, you know, not that you can't do, but you're, you're not doing and you don't know how to achieve it. You don't know how to get that million dollar budget, that two, five million dollar budget, even that five hundred thousand dollar budget. You don't know even how to get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't know how to get it. No. So the easiest way to cope with not having that is to just be angry about it. I think it's the easiest yeah. way. It's not the most sensible and not everybody is like that. No. But I think that's where a lot of it comes from. Because like it's Especially sort of, in horror, and I and and I think that's I think uh, that's a big that I'm specifically saying horror. Yeah, you know how much indie filmmakers is indie horror filmmakers hate Hollywood horror. Well, I mean, yeah, how much they hate the remakes. They hate, hate the remakes. They really hate the multiples. Yeah. And, oh my they god. They really get on it. But Saw nine hundred and twelve. Yeah. But you want to know something? Those filmmakers. They are doing things that a lot of us can't do. You know, mm. they have a level of experience yeah. that most of us are far from having. Well, I think it's it's partially it's it's that teenage angsty kind of thing well, where it's, it's like, I'm, I, well, I can't do this yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna pretend that I don't want to do it, and it's yeah. not the cool thing. Yes. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying yeah. that they're angry that they can't. That that I'm not saying that they're angry. Oh, it's not like jealousy. No, I don't mean it in that jealousy. Like, oh, well, you look no. It, but it's it's one of those things of you don't know what it is you don't know. Okay. That's, that's, and I say that so much, but a lot of indie filmmakers, a lot of filmmakers in general, like, well, what do you need a red camera for? You're right. What do you need it for? You need it when you have a crew that size, you need a camera. That camera is a full production studio in and, in and of itself. Yeah. Everything that camera does everything you need. The quality footage you get out of it truly is. I mean, we've we've been in film festivals where it's like all of a sudden you get to it and there it goes up on the big you screen. You see it, and then you're like, "Oh, that's out of focus. Yes. That's yeah. a soft focus yeah. right there. That's bordering mm -hmm. right on the line of soft focus." Mm -hmm. In fact, and then you sit it next to another film that was shot on one of these other cameras, one of these yeah. better, and you see it. The difference. You yeah. look at it and go, "Oh my!" Oh, your colors God. are so nice. Your shadows are so nice. Your depth is so nice. Everything is perfect. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying the camera does it for you. It absolutely does not do it for you. No. It's just capable of doing things that others are just not. And you can fix a lot more. Yeah, but it's not even it's it's not even so much fixing, it's the latitude to do what you want with yeah, it. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. Right. That's what allows you to get that. But I think yeah, and I think all of this feeds into where it's like, should I have used that camera? Should I have gone and rented? Should I put down some more money? Should I no. have hired this? Should I have done this? Should I have done no, that? No, no, because we're still looking at low, we're still looking at our budget here. Yeah. And the truth is, these cameras cost more than both of our feature films combined. Yes. So the fact is, unless we had a camera person mm -hmm. who is who's experienced with this, yeah, it's one of those things where yeah, sure, I could I could throw a red on my shoulder and figure it out. No. You know, and get some good shots out of it, make a good looking short out of it. But the truth is, all of that capability is lost on me because I don't know the right. extent of what it's capable of doing. Right. I really don't. Yeah. You know, because I've never done half of that stuff before. You know, I've never even shot high speed footage to do to do that beautiful slow motion. Yeah. I've never even done that before. Right. You know? Well, the goal for next Next but <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just, that's just one of those things. And this I say it's yeah. it's I don't even know what I what it is I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You know, so there's so much that they, that these cameras can do. I don't even know what half of it is. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I wish I would have had that. I, but I don't know that it does it. Yeah. You know, and and that's and that's a fact for more than just cameras. That's just production in general. Yeah. When you get to a bigger something we're talking about recently is one of the shorts we want to do. Yeah. And we're debating on what is it, whether we want to uh, apply for a permit. Well, we're going to apply for the permit, but what is the process of applying for a permit? What does a permit get you? 
Yes. What what exactly does the permit get you? And what does it take to have like a side street of a, of the, where that we're shooting shut down and made personal for us? Yeah. You know, I've never done that. Nope. On a set. Nope. You know, we've applied for a permit, and never gotten it. <laughs> I've, we've, we've, I've applied for three permits yeah. and never gotten a single response from them. Mm-hmm. I've applied. I've I've contacted multiple rental houses for blood slaughter. Contacted multiple res- rental houses to rent a vintage police car. Never got an answer from them. Nope. You know, um, and that's another thing. Like, well, how the hell do I get them to answer me? Yeah. You know. Three different rental houses for literally the same car yeah. because it's you know it's how many of this one 1983 cruiser police cruiser could there really be by private owners in New York? Yeah. Okay, and I'd gone to three different rental places that had the same exact photo of the same exact car <laughs> on their website. Yeah, it's probably the same car, but it is the same car. No, I'm just saying it's totally yeah. the same car. So it's one owner. It's- who is listed just who, three uh, who has yeah. yes who has it listed on all these different uh, uh, rental? So clearly places. he's like he's he's open to renting it exactly. But, but these rent no, all three of them did not respond. Yeah, never got. A Sometimes call. I think to myself that we need like a massgravepictures.com email. I feel like it would make us more. I official. have one. I do use that. I don't use yes. that. I don't have one. I have an MGP director at at massgravepictures.com. Oh. I do. Now everybody's gonna send you emails. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but it just makes you say, like, what is it that... How do you get to that next level? Yeah, how do you get people to pay attention? Yeah. How do you get people to look at you? How do, like, and, and I don't have an answer for that. No. You know, we filled out for three separate permits that we filed with the with the city of New York, mm-hmm. with the... with the um, Parks Department. No, no, no. The uh, mayor's Mayor, office. Mayor, mayor's office of film. Television and, television. and film. Yeah. Never got a response for three separate permits for yeah. two separate projects. Yeah. Never got a response. How? How? Yeah. How do you just get ignored? Yeah. You how know? do I get taken more seriously? Yes. How do I? How do I prove I'm legitimate? Yeah. And that's one of those things. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Yeah, and that, and I feel like that feeds into the film festival. Yeah. How do feeling, you get the bigger festival yeah. to pay attention to you when they've got, you know, thirty other films that they are paying attention to because they're just more prestigious. Yeah. You know, or, or they know the filmmaker's name. Yeah, or there's or a name. there's a name in the film, or, or there's somebody who's played there before, or yeah. they're a local. And how do you how do you even distinguish that when you're looking at all the acceptances? Yeah. Like, you know, you can't even... I mean, some people blow my mind with the amount of research and, like, levels of information that they have, and it's like, I really, like... You know, and I think that's part of what I kicked myself for, where it's like, why don't I have a spreadsheet of film festivals that we've submitted to? And why don't I have this spreadsheet of how many people we've made? And then I'm just like, I'm not even organized enough. Am I Am I not working enough? Am I not trying enough? Am I not, you know, hustling enough? And, mm-hmm. you know, I always feel like the answer is no. So you beat yourself up. Um, you know, you really do go through like, well, how many stages of... Grief. grief five seven <laughs> five, 30 seven i don't know 30 i feel like i went through them all unending stage um you know but i, I you know i i tried to recenter myself you know i enjoy coloring i have coloring books like there's so many of them yeah. it's ridiculous whenever you pull out a coloring book i know you're stressed <laughs> <laughs> so i mean you have a coping mechanism and you know i pulled out my coloring book and i started coloring and kind of just trying to be to fight that downward spiral of just self-doubt. From one festival. From one festival, which I made in my mind, which I yeah. think, you know, now... Which is funny because the truth is you've got, and to be honest, 10 or 12 other rejections. Yeah. You know, of the... We have 11 laurels for this already. Really? There's 11 laurels for Beneath. Wow. Look at that. Suddenly perked up. <laughs> yeah, you've got 11 laurels between between like selections them. and nominations and awards. Yeah, you've got 11. And um, yeah, there's at least 11 or 12 Now, you know, like everybody in the them. audience just turned on me and they're like, you bitch. <laughs> you have 11 laurels? No, I'm kidding. Um, and that's, see, but that's that's part of it too. Yeah. That's part of it where you realize like, well, there's, I'm actually, I'm doing good. I'm what doing am pretty I complaining good. About? Yeah. And then I think, you know, then you're like, you know, then it's like your expectations are it's, too high and, you know, you, you're not reading this, you're losing sight and you're not, 
properly evaluating yeah. the situation. And then you get mad at yourself about that. It's really stupid. I like to beat the shit out of myself. Yeah. I think. Um, well, we, well, I think everybody does. Yeah. You know, uh, what was it? Um, Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. said, um, I don't know how he said, I don't remember. I'm not going to, I'm paraphrasing here. Basically how when he started his career, he just wanted to, like, he wanted to, uh, uh, um, I think he wanted to, like, there was a local, whatever, the local comedy club. He's like, you know, I want to do this. You know, I want to be there one day and be like the head, the lead, you know, like the the headline for the night or whatever, you know, yeah. at this comedy club that he always went to. Yeah. And he wants to be the, the guy for the night. Right. And, he, and he did, you know. And then he got there and, well, now he wants to be the guy for this for this comedy club right you know then he got himself a tv show okay well now all right well that's just, just no i I, I, I i need to, yeah Not anymore every every and that's that's exactly what this is every time you give yourself a new uh, um a new goal yeah a new as soon as you hit it yeah a new one immediately arises yeah you never hit the top there's never enough of no. It's it's a drug addiction. It really is like a like it like really a drug is. addiction, you know. But that's success. Yeah, when we made beneath, it was like you're never. Oh, hey, I wrote this, enough. and you were like, "Let's film it." And I was like, "Really? We're yeah, gonna, we're gonna film this. Okay, yeah. let's do this." And then now, all of a sudden, then the "What's next?" question came, mm -hmm. and I started finding myself like, "Well, I'm writing this, and I'm writing this, and then you know, now I have three scripts and, and two scripts. Let's just yeah. be honest and calm too, because that third one just trash it." Um, <laughs> But now I have two. And now I actually I started on another one. So two and yeah. two and a fourth, two and a sixteenth, two and a sixteenth Jesus. scripts. <laughs> uh, you know, but you do you you do get addicted to it, and you do want to keep taking steps. I think I think you kind of part of you realizes how low you may have been aiming. Yeah, you know, part of you realizes like, well, maybe I maybe I wasn't really well. I got that. That was kind of simple. Yeah. It was kind of easy to get there. Yeah. What about this? Well, that was kind of easy too, you know. And I think that's kind of how. Well, it's funny because it was like it axe wound was really high, was on a pedestal for yeah. me. Yeah. And then I got it, and it was like, what? What? Oh, oh, we're here uh, now. What happened? How do you go? Yeah. <laughs> now what? Now what do you now do? Now what do I do? And then it was like, you know, now I've just been constantly reevaluating, and it's like you, like you said, I've had eleven laurels now. I've played in London. Um, you know, we're getting a lot more exposure. At least I feel like I'm getting a lot more exposure. People mm -hmm. are actually talking like at to me. Um, yeah. And it's just like, I just totally lost my train of thought. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, then it's just like you start evaluating and then all of a sudden like something is like, oh, boom, <laughs> like smack you in the face. Nope. You're not here yet. And you're like, oh, how do I get there? Yeah. You know, and then. So you ride, you ride the high, you ride the high, yeah. And you keep getting higher and higher, and then event, and then and then you, you then you know, get you, smacked you down. Aim, you aim for for that specific wave, and you realize you're no, no. You, you're not there yet. No. That wave is still too big for you. Yeah, and it still crashes over your head, and you tumble yep. through the. And, and it, it, that's a really great analogy. So yeah, the the wave comes up and smacks you down into the water, and then you kind of have to like flounder around until you get yourself settled and get your head above water again. Um, just for the next waves to come and hit you and either it's going to lift you up or knock you back down. Yeah. It's, that's a really great explanation mm -hmm. of how it feels in the film festival circuit. Yeah. My, um, my goal, I, ever since we finished Theta, mm -hmm. my goal is, has been to move toward, you know, directing films that I didn't write. Yeah. And in the last, I'm not going to get too detailed but in the last week we have I've gotten two steps, steps I've yes. gotten two steps closer to that yep I've gotten two steps closer to that and I think that's the other part you I've know got, I think we've kind of <clears throat> honestly spoken about the the downside and the hardness of mm -hmm. of film festivals um so then you know I'm lucky that I have you and we've said this before you know us being a team and having mm -hmm. somebody that we share a life with also share this life with us yeah um, so you would not let me throw myself a pity party. Of, yeah, I yelled at you. <laughs> he yelled at me. <laughs> you yelled at me. You put your foot in my ass. Um, I said, uh, guess what? I did I did this a year ago and we're still going. Yeah, so. we're still going and, you know, deal with it. Get over it and yeah. pick yourself back up and shut up. Um, 
you know, so then it took about, I'd say by Monday night, Tuesday, I had kind of mm. gotten my head above water again. And it was, where are we going next? And what do I have to do? What's What happened with Beneath that we could improve on? And where are we going next? And and that's the important thing. You're going to get knocked down. Yeah. But it's how you get back up. You know, that really matters. And it seems so cheesy and stupid to say. And I've shared mm-hmm. a thousand of these stupid motivational things. And it's absolutely true. Every single one of them, you know. <laughs> so in the so after this kind of disappointment, um, we decided to escalate yeah. some of our goals for the year. So we've... Went from deciding that we were going to make seven short films, yep, <laughs> which yeah. was insane in the first place. No, really wasn't. No, we we're going to make seven really small, yeah. low budget no, short they, films. They were, they were, yeah, manageable. Yeah. What was that next goal? What was my next goal? I don't even remember what my next six week goal was. Your next six week goal was to get this other thing scheduled yeah. and something else. Something else. I don't know. You don't should have know. written your goal down. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, oh, so then an update on my goal. Um, we already did pre-production on seven of the short film scripts that we want to do. Um, yeah, that's right. You wanted to get pre you wanted to get pre-production done. Yep. So I've reached out to my the actress that I'd like for the role. Um, mm-hmm. She is reviewing the script and I will give me feedback. Mm-hmm. But she sounds interested, which yep. is awesome. Um, we started finding locations. I reached out to the Nassau County Film Commission for a location I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. So we are rolling on pre-production for that one. Um, We started pre-production and went through. We'll do a breakdown. We'll walk you guys through our process. Oh, I wanted to decide on what the on what the festival baby was going to be. Yes, make a decision on. And that's done too. And it's done. (laughs) Figured it out. I figured it out. And that's that's this is where I was. That's where I was going earlier when I said uh, we were talking about the, the other authors that I have now two authors. Yes. That I have spoken to about adapting their stories to film, and they have. Both said yes. Yes. They are both excited. Yes. There's no, it's nothing's in writing yet, so no. nothing, you know. But, not saying anything. Yeah. I'm not getting too, but two of the two authors are both excited. They're both happy to be. So we're taking steps out yes. of our comfort zone. Coincidentally, too, the two authors are good friends. Yeah. Which is, which is yes. nice. Yes. Coincidentally, they are both, they are both good friends. Yeah. You know? Um, um, so they're happy to be part of this little new. Yeah. So I have to say we got hungrier. We got hungrier. Yeah. Um, You know, we got rejected. We got disappointed. We Mm -hmm. went through the seven stages of grief. Um, (laughs) I ate lots of peanuts and cranberries yesterday. Yeah. (laughs) Because I would not let myself have ice cream or Oreo cookies. Good. Good. Um, Peanuts and cranberries is good. It's better. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then we just got hungrier and we are taking... You're more than me, but... We are taking. Oh, I don't know about me. I haven't done too much other than talk to a few. Yeah, people. we are taking. We are attempting to take larger mm-hmm. strides I and get out of our comfort zone of yeah. what we've previously done and try and take ourselves again to another level for mm-hmm. you and I. And it doesn't matter if it's a film festival baby or if whatever film festivals we get into, is the fact that we're try we're stepping out of our comfort zone and challenging ourselves. Yeah. So there you go. That's what I got. So you just ended the podcast for us. Good job. That was the wisdom. <laughs> so, you know, I hope this is helpful to people. Um, we we were talking, you know, off mic, and it was kind of like we were saying that we're not really talking a lot about the mistakes that you can make when filmmaking, um, and which is kind of our mission statement that we wanted to be honest about this process. And so... Yeah. Here we are. I hope this is And then helpful. a minute later, we also got something else. We got a message from somebody who got us on another conversation, which um, upset me. Not what, not the message, but just that conversation we had, where which is another, another, I guess, downside to what we do. We do horror. Festivals don't care for horror. Oh, yeah. You know? I, I don't really, I don't want to, I don't want to soapbox it, but it's just... I was listening to another podcast earlier. Big podcast, big. If you are an indie filmmaker, I guarantee you go to their website. Yep, I was listening to the same one, but I only got halfway through the episode. Yeah, and it's something I've said before. I've actually tweeted to them about it and got no response yeah. about 
the fact that they give horror no respect whatsoever. Yeah. None. They just don't care about horror. No. And there are so many indie horror filmmakers out there for this show mm-hmm. and website that we all reference. go to. We all yeah. reference. We all go to it. We all use it. They have. They seem to have absolutely no no regard for horror filmmakers whatsoever. And I think the other interesting thing too is that um, I'm just being I'm just being salty here. Yeah, I know you are. So <laughs> cutting you off. Cutting you off. Um, but the other interesting thing is what I'm finding with Beneath is I'm getting into a lot of non horror film festivals. Well, it's comedic. It's comedic. Um, but that's a, definitely an interesting. For us, definitely. Yeah. That's a, that's a new realm for us, to yeah. be going to non-horror festivals. Yeah. I mean, you know, New York Short, which, you know, we, we they did have a horror block and we did win it. Mm-hmm. Toot, 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 my uh-huh. horn. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, that was interesting to experience a film festival because mm-hmm. we don't go to non-horror film festivals. Yeah. We go to horror film festivals. We make yeah. horror movies, go to horror and film it's, festivals. And it's because... If they don't have a horror block yeah. or do horror, they don't care. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, um, we're screening this weekend mm-hmm. uh, in Jersey City beneath the screening um, yeah. at the Brightside Tavern Film Series. They are actually introducing horror block for mm-hmm. the first time. First time they have a horror block. Um, I think they have two of them, actually. They have another one Sunday morning. Yeah. So they're actually introducing horror blocks, which is pretty cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Hang on to your shorts, Yeah. Um, which we also got into on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, they are also, I think... It seems to be introducing another there is horror, a block. horror block. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's two new things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a film festival uh, that I submitted to reach out, and they are attempting to build a horror block. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, hey, we need some more horror submissions. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is interesting. I, I think that the film f- horror filmmakers real lot have started to really realize film festivals don't care. No. You know, we keep sent, I can't, I don't know how many, like how many horror, how many festivals we've sent to mm-hmm. that don't specifically cater to horror. Yeah. But we said, you know what? We, we can, I think we can, you know, I think that they would like our film, you know, especially because, especially ones that are New York based yeah. and New Jersey based festivals that want New York and New Jersey shot films. Yeah. So like, okay, well we shot New York and New Jersey. Great. Let's submit and look, well, here's, also, here's local, local horror filmmakers. I think it's also interesting in that like there is a lot of need. If you're submitting to film festivals, if you're looking at film festivals, if you're following film festivals, there is a lot of calls for women Filmmakers, female-centric stories, um, minority-backed projects. Yeah. Um, you know, so I feel like the film festivals are being aware that, you know, there's a societal change right now. Um, and I think that with the women in horror movement, I feel like a lot of the festivals are seeing just how big it can be. So they're cashing in. So they're cashing in. I don't know how I feel about, you know, riding that wave, but I'm riding it, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think it's, it, it is very much, you have to be very, you have to be a lot more aware and a lot more diligent about what you submit to, which is what I'm kind of learning. I just get really like trigger happy on that button and I'm just like, submit, 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 Everybody submit, does. submit. <laughs> Everybody does. And then I'm like, why did I submit to this again? Which one did I submit to? What is happening? Don't let it get you down. Okay. Let's do my hashtag for the week. Hashtag don't let it get you down. All right. I haven't done hashtag in a while, or I don't remember them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sorry for the downer of an episode this week, but that's kind of where we're at right now. I guess this was just a dealing with rejection. Yeah. And let us know if you find this interesting or important or helpful in any way. I mean, we're okay being honest. Trying. Trying to be. It's a little awkward. A little uncomfortable. But for you guys, I'll do it. Yeah, so let us know if you love it, hate it. Give us some feedback. Mm-hmm. It's cool. I'm getting better and better at taking rejection. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. You know, I, I know that we've, like we've said for a long time, we, we do these films together. Mm-hmm. You know? But as you're... You're seeing the difference. Yeah. It's of, a li- it's- uh, finally being in front now. 
and 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 that everything's a little increased. The years of rejection yeah. have kind of been on my back. Yeah. I've taken the rejections because it's because I've been the director. So it's like if there's something's wrong, it's my fault. Yeah. So if something's rejected, it's, it's my, my fault. fault. If it wasn't yeah. good enough, it's, it's because of me. Yeah. I didn't do good enough. Yeah, I didn't make the right decisions. Yeah. I didn't do this. I and didn't I think, do that. think for the first time, you're 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 you're, you're finally feeling what it's like. To, I mean, and I don't mean that like in a vindictive way. Just right. in that, like you know, you're finally see, feeling what it's like to have people judge you on your work. Yeah. And there's nobody else that you can say well, well, well about. You know. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. But then again, at the same time, you're kind of experiencing I, the other side of things where you're the loving support and there's just nothing you can do when the other one is just feeling bad. Yeah, part of me, too, says, you know what, it's, that, that's what makes you, that, I think that's, it's part of being a filmmaker. Yeah. It's part of any, any level of any type of art you want to do. It's trial by fire, my friend. <laughs> any type of art you want to do, um, rejection is part of it yeah. and you have to learn to get used to it. Yeah, even my dad, I called home. Um, I didn't like call home, but you know, I had my weekly phone call with my parents that I'm sure everybody does. They were like, "How's it going, kiddo? You don't sound that great." And I was like, yeah, "I'm fine." Mm. And they're like, "Oh, is work getting you down?" I'm like, "No, I didn't get into my film festival," you know. And then you know, my my parents, in typical fashion, were like, "Well, fuck them. <laughs> like, they don't get your shit." Well. Then. <laughs> That's what parents do. And I was like, thanks, Dad. You're the greatest. Yeah. Well, and well, then, they don't get yours, no, but they get 50 other films that yeah. they love. And I was like, yeah, but they get all these other films. Yeah. You know, that and I was like, not, that, that we're not as good. And as. then I kind of explained the situation. And then my dad was and like, so suck it up. Uh, suck it up. And that's something that runs through my head every time I read these. Oh, well, it's not that your film wasn't good. And you know, all the rejection notices say, yeah. the sa say the same thing. It's not that it wasn't good enough. It's just that we only have so much time for so much this. That means that mine was not good enough mm. for you to say we have to have this. Mine wasn't good enough to earn that time slot. Yes. You yes. didn't give me the time. Yes. And it's not a personal thing. No. It's, it's it's really not, and I think that's the thing you have to like hold on to. It's not a personal thing, and a lot of times, like it's like you tell yourself all the time, well, you know, maybe it's just not the right festival, maybe it's not the right audience for me, you know, maybe this, you know, wasn't just the place for it, you know, uh, maybe this wasn't the project for them. Mm -hmm. And as much as they are sort of like placaters, they're also somewhat true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of the things that you kind of like, you know, pump yourself up and. Like, well, maybe well, there's only so much time. Yeah, there wasn't the right it's project. True. It is true. Though. It is true. There is only so much time. But that means that within that so much time, they have to pick the best of the best or mm -hmm. the ones that affected them the most. Yeah. Because even festivals that we've been rejected from, we've gone to some of them and been like, wow, really? That one? Really? What was that? That was, but something about it spoke to them. Yeah. And that's all that matters. You know, it's, it's, you got to remember that this too is. Subjective. Yeah. It's subjective to the judges. Yeah. You know? And you're not just uh you're not just making films for yourself. You are making films for yourself. And that's what a lot of them a lot of that's what they say. They that they can see that genuine. Mm -hmm. Something that's you, something that's uniquely your yeah. voice. And you have to find that unique voice. But sometimes I think that's even if it is a unique voice. That unique voice might not be the voice they want to hear right now. Yeah, I mean, if you're making a horror comedy, they maybe they saw like three, four horror comedies in a row, and they were just like, "Oh God, another horror comedy! Here we go." Mm -hmm. You know, um, you never know. Yeah. As I said when I when I judged that twenty four that forty eight hour competition mm -hmm. last year, it came down to well, okay, well these are both really good, but this one did it a little bit better. Yeah, you know, and maybe it's not, and and, and sometimes there was one that was really good. But there was another one that I just, it spoke to me better. Yeah. And I chose that one because I personally, this one may, this, this one here may have been really well done, but this one spoke to me. Like yeah. there was something about the aesthetic of it. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, you know, we watch Ink Master mm -hmm. and how many times, you know, you look at the two tattoos and, you know, the, the, when the, when, when the two judges are back, back to back and you know, one says one, one says the other. You know, Dave Navarro will get in the middle and say, you know, this one is, this one is, I, I like, I mean, I like the artistry in this one, but that one speaks to me. Yeah. Like, I would wear this myself. Yeah. I have to go with that. This is all because time. I would wear this. <laughs> yeah. Because it's his style. Yeah. You know, and you got to remember that the judges, are ju all judges for film yeah. festivals are the same way. That it, as much yeah. as they try not to, they, you can't help but, you know, it have a personal taste. Yeah. No, you can't help it. And, and, and so. 
Yeah. You just have to embrace it. Yeah. So, so yeah, again, I hope this is helpful. And um, you can take us out this week. I'm going to take us out. Uh-huh. I don't even know how to take us out. You can do it. I don't know. Yeah, you can. God, I just got out of one comfort zone. Now yep, you're going to yep. shove gonna me out of another, another one. Go for it. Um, you got to do it at some point. So that was it for Filmmaking Sucks this week. <laughs> <laughs> so follow us on Stitcher, iTunes, uh, any of your favorite podcasting apps. Give us a rate or review. Give us five stars. Give us one star. Just let us know what you generally think of us. Uh, if you can follow us at Masgrave Pictures, which is mas- at Masgrave on Twitter, at MGP Director. On Instagram at Masgravet on Twitter. And as always, you can follow us on Facebook at Filmmaking Sucks Podcast. Actually, it's Filmmaking Podcast. Yeah, it's Filmmaking Podcast. Facebook.com slash Filmmaking Podcast. See, I knew it was going to fuck something up. Uh, whatever. It's all right. Follow us on Facebook there and, and everything. And make sure, join the indie filmmaker yes. community. Yes. Join that. We have a nice little group over there. Uh, indie filmmaker community. But do the right thing. Facebook. Say hello. Introduce yourself. Yes. Yes. Um, You know. Yes. We are trying to get rid of. We're trying to prevent it from becoming another haven for people to just promote themselves and drop their projects in and everything. You know, if you want to come join the community, ask questions. Join the conversation. Join the conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Get be active. Yeah. Be active. Listen to people. Comment. Mm -hmm. Like. You know, if you have a question, ask a question. Yeah. So be active. Join your yep. communities. Go to the film festivals. Swallow your pride. Um, Get out there, everybody. And make good movies. Yeah.